Welcome back DIY car guys and this is kind of a pet peeve. I see this a lot on YouTube and it just bothers the crap at me. And let me show you guys down here what bothers me. So I see guys when they're installing these harmonic balancers on whatever motor they have, maybe whatever motor they have, it's ridiculously hard compared to a small block Chevy, but I have never ever had a problem with a small block Chevy that I felt that I had to use heat to ever get it off or put it on. Maybe on a really old junkyard motor that you don't care about the seals or the crappy balancer coming off, you're gonna use heat just to get it off. That's one thing I, I probably would be okay with. But when you're using a brand new balancer that has material in here, the damping material, oops, that is closed on me, has damping material in here. So when you're heating this up, you know, some guys wonder like why these things turn around on and your, your timing is getting messed up. It's because you probably either have a crappy balancer or you've damaged the material in here and the whole thing just doesn't keep your timing on the marks like it should because you probably use heat and you screwed it up. See, I'm not even gonna use a real harmonic and balancing installing tools. So I don't understand the need why some of you guys had to get the tool and then use heat because you're scared you're gonna strip the thread out in your crank. If you're putting that much force on it, something is wrong. All right, so back here, I have just a pair of vice grips clamped onto the crank, resting on the block, just so the motor doesn't turn over while we're installing this guy right here. If you're wondering what's going on right here, this guy, the dial indicator, we're just gonna use that to verify top dead center on the pointer to the balancer, so that way we know that's correct. We'll do that after the balancer is installed though. So if you look right here, I have assembly lube on the outside and I have it on the inside and I also have the crank and I have it on the seal right there. That will just make your life a lot easier. All right, so let's hold that on there. This is just some very cheap stuff I got right here to put this guy on. I'm just gonna make sure I have decent thread engagement. Maybe you're pulling threads out because you're when you're doing this, you're not having enough thread engagement like maybe two or three threads, but I got more than enough threads to pull this guy on there, watch. And we're just gonna turn her on. So look at that. It shouldn't be super hard to put these guys on there, boys. I understand why you need heat. It's ridiculous. Heat is just gonna ruin everything up here. You should be punched in the dick when you use heat. You only have so many threads right here. See, look, right here. So we're good. We can go on farther with this install tool right here. And it's not even an install tool. Maybe the install tools just suck. That's all I can guess. Maybe the install tools suck, and that's the reason why you have to use heat. Maybe that's the reason. Maybe a bolt is the way you should be doing it the whole entire time. So let me switch to a shorter bolt. All right, we could have gone farther, but oh well. All right, so I'm just gonna see how far we can go before this bottoms out, just for reference. Just to make sure we're not gonna hit those threads. Look at this, see? Let's see how far we can go. So I just wanna put a washer right there because of course, just start the grind on there. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's continue. I think we're there now. Yep. We are on the timing assembly. See that? We have a hard stop like that, you're done. No heat. See that? You don't need heat. 
Okay, I'll explain one more time why you probably don't want to use heat. It's not good for your balancer, I'm telling you right now. So let's look at the balancer and what it's made up of. Right here you have a hub section, right here, and this is what attaches to your crank. And when you're pulling these guys off, don't use the big teeth things that go around here because after the hub, there's a rubber section. If I were to take this plate off, see these bolts right here? If I were to take this plate off, pull it off, you would see rubber behind this guy right here. And that rubber, its job is to just dampen the vibrations of your motor. So out here, you have your timing marks, right? So if that rubber gets loose and this guy starts to rotate, possibly because you have heated it up and whatever material they use or adhesive to make that rubber bind to that hub right there, you have now loosened it up and this guy can now start to rotate back and forth like this and then you're losing your timing marks. One big reason for that, if your timing marks start to move like you know four or five degrees and you're putting your timing light on there and you want to put a send it tune up with a 300 shot on your motor and it is moved five degrees advance, there is a good chance at the top end of the track, you may spit your spark plugs out your exhaust and put a hole in your cylinder. And you're like, I don't know what happened. I, I had my timing retarded. Well, check your balancer. If that guy moves, your SOL, that's your fault. Let me get some of my flavored water up in here. Mm-hmm. Oh, spilling, spilling. That's for my dead homies, I guess. All right, right here we have our 400 small block Chevy size meter And as you can see, it fits perfectly into the cylinder. That's when you know it's a big boy. Well, it has been hours later. I've already shot the sequence. The flavored water had hit me. I did a horrible job at explaining all this. So we're gonna try this again. Oh. All right, so first thing I want to point out is this is a little farther from the harmonic balancer than I like. And I'm still going to rock with it, but there's a little something you need to take in consideration when you're using your timing light on this. And I'll explain that real quick before we get to this right here. Okay, so right here we have our timing light, right? Now, since this is kind of up far, from the balancer, you're gonna have a little bit of perspective shift of where you're gonna be hitting your timing marks on this guy. So when I'm setting this guy right here at top dead center, I just need to make sure, because usually when I'm doing my timing, the um, water pumps can be right here, I have to be a little bit lower, and I'm gonna be right around here when I'm doing my timing. Because if I'm down here and I'm che um, checking my timing, which I probably couldn't get to right there, it'll be kind of aiming a little bit higher and it may be registering a little bit retarded. If you were taking your timing over here like this, then it may register a little bit more advanced than what you see it right there. So just take that into consideration. You want to be in the same location whenever you take your timing readings at the same perspective. That's going to help you get your timing more advanced where you want to be and more precise, I guess, not advanced, more precise of what it is actually on the motor. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to rotate the motor this way and get a reading and then I'm going to rotate the motor back the opposite direction and we're going to get a reading. And then in between those two readings, we're going to find top dead center. So we'll show you right here. Let me get a close up of this guy right here on the dial indicator so you can see exactly what's happening. Just remember, when I'm turning this back and forth, I'm going to take the motor one way, that way, and take it back that way and make some marks. All right, so here we go. Let's take the, let's see where we are real quick. And the piston's coming down, so we're going to go back up. And we're going to make sure that this is first zeroed. Let's see if that stops at zero. See that? It's going to stop. It's a little bit off, so let's... This is a little finicky. It's not the best tool for this, but it's all I got. It's definitely good enough to get top dead center for a timing light. Let's see. We go back this way. Going to go up. All right. It's going to go down. Let's go the opposite direction. Make sure it stops at zero. And good enough. All right. So 
let's first go this direction and we're gonna take it down to around 50, right? We'll stop at 50, right? Oh, went too far. Let's go back. Let's try it again. And we're gonna stop at 50. I'm trying this around the camera is a little tough. All right, so it's at 50. We're gonna, like I said before, I'm gonna look directly down on it like I would with a timing light. I'm gonna put a mark right here on the balancer. All right, so where I would be is right around here. Got to keep the orientation and I'm gonna hit it right, a little small dot right there. So right. There we go, right there. There's our first mark right there. Can you see it? A little dot. All right. So now we're going to go in the opposite direction. Oops. We're going to take it back to zero. See that? And then it's going to go down and we're going to stop at 50. I got to do it real slow. Went back a little bit. Stop at 50. 50. There we go. Now we're at 50. Right. There. That'll work. Okay, so I'm going to measure from zero right here on the harmonic balancer to one of these marks. I'm gonna take the reading with the calipers. You can use like measuring tape or whatever you have to get that measurement. I'm gonna use calipers because this is probably gonna be the easiest for me to go from point A to point B to know how much is off from one side to the other. Because remember, you're taking these two measurements and in the middle of both these measurements is going to be your true top dead center. Now, if you're like slightly a bit off, like, you know, a couple hundred thousands or whatever, don't worry about it because there's no way that when you have your timing light on there and the motor's running, vibrating, that you're gonna be perfectly on that timing mark when you move your distributor. It's just gonna be very hard to get it perfect. But the idea is try to get as close as possible in that same angle, so that way you have a pretty good reference of where it's at, especially like in my vehicle, I have a timing computer, so I can pull from the computer individual degrees of timing out perfectly. So if I'm doing a nitrous pass, I have my timing box, have my timing turned out. I can use that timing light to verify that it is indeed pulling timing. So that's very important. And if you're doing NA pulls, tuning an NA for the straight, you'll know you'd be within a degree of whatever that timing is. So now let's go ahead and take those measurements. So I'm just gonna go from zero right here to that first mark. And I'm gonna say that's probably pretty good. And we have 690 thousandths. Look, I barely moved it and these hundreds are moving. So that's why I say, don't worry about that. That's not too important. Just worry about the two big numbers really. So I'm gonna lock it down. Let's go from the other side and see how close we are. And as you can see, this guy is dead nuts on. So zero right here, when I move this, is definitely, boop, top dead center. All right guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. And there's some things, you know, I do that people make fun of me on my vehicles, because some of them are a little bit of a, a send it and get her done moments. But one thing I do not skimp on is my tune-ups. Always make sure it's not too fat, not too lean. Make sure my timing is perfect. I pull my plugs out and verify those timing marks on there. Make sure they're not too fat with the plugs. You just don't rely on your wide band. You also have to rely on looking at the plugs and make sure things aren't lean on all your cylinders, especially on a carbureted motor because you can easily have lean cylinders. And with that said, I got more videos coming. When this motor gets in here, we are going 
to tune it, and I'll show you how I tune it, the steps I do, because I'm changing the entire carburetor, so that's gonna be a big tuning moment, and there's definitely gonna be a lot of things different from this guy right here, as opposed to this guy right there. So if you wanna see that, subscribe to my channel. I got more videos coming, man. Until next time, peace. Yeah.